All right. Good here. Vamsi, thank you for doing this. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And we're here in India on Pi Day, March 14th. Yes. And it's a pleasure to have this uh, conversation with you. So thank you for taking time. It's been a fun day. I wanted to briefly share the story of how we connected and uh, how we uh, first partnered actually less than a year ago. Mm -hmm. So as I uh, do very regularly, I contact open source developers on, uh, on the internet. And I believe uh, I first heard about Plane starting to trend maybe early, very early in the first few days of April, 2023. And uh, if my memory serves, which we just verified earlier, looking at the, the history, uh, I DM'd you on April 6th uh, from the OSIS Capital Twitter account actually. And then a week went by, you responded, I think your brother Vihar responded, and then we exchanged some emails, then you emailed us. And then I actually went cold, I didn't respond to you for like a month and a half. It's pretty crazy. And then we ended up doing a call, I think on uh, May 31st. Yep. And then over that call and maybe one follow-up conversation over the following two days, we agreed to work together. Yep. And we led a $4 million seed uh, when you incorporated your company and it's been a privilege and honor to work with you since then. So it's been less than a year since you've created Plain and I've had the privilege of watching and learning from you and seeing how you execute and how you build things. And it's very impressive, uh, nothing short of uh, mind blowing to me what you've, what you've been able to accomplish in uh, less than a year. So I want to start off by asking more of a philosophical question. What motivates you? Yeah, uh, maybe I'll start with uh, something very interesting and which is close to my heart. But I, I always wanted to create things on the planet, at least on Earth. I'm not talking about Mars. Uh, I want to create something that helps or pushes the boundaries of individuals, teams and organizations, not just uh, just a tool. Just want to push the boundaries towards uh, the concept of progress. That's what we keep talking at Plain. Uh, so anything that I would create, what motivates me a lot is the creation process and the creation that I give it to people. It could be an individual or a small team or an organization, a very large organization. And that keeps me driving every single day. And that's where I've had it. So my thought process every single day is towards progress. And I want that to happen with Plain. So that's that's the overall thing that motivates me. And why did you create Plain in the first place? What are the origins of the project? Yeah, it, it backs to, I think, uh, we'll have to go 2015, uh, when I always wanted to start a company. And then 2017, I actually started a company, uh, which is my previous company called Caravel. Uh, it came out of this nice little big ships from Pirates into Caribbean, or inspired from that, and then named my company Caravel.ai. And then we were building a lot of uh, artificial intelligence models. Back then, it was not large language models, pretty much tiny, small, but models, uh, NLPs, OpenCV, SpaceE, all that stuff. Uh, helping a lot of people all across the globe, right from companies uh, in the United States, Canada, London, all, all across the globe. And that's when, during the pandemic, we thought we would hit the bottommost curve of the revenue. But on the flip side, we had massive amount of requests where we headed towards the direction of revenue. And I had to reject a few people, not saying no to them, of not taking up the project and consulting them. And that's where we grew the whole team from 4 to 40 within like 6-7 months. Uh, because we had massive amount to work on the table to deal with. And then I was struggling to manage my team because it was pandemic. And it was quite uh, you know, frustrating also for me, just locked down, just have to stay at home, you can't even walk out. I'm not just talking about remote, it's, it's all locked down. You are completely at home, you can't even step out of home. So this was the kind of situation that I'm in. And uh, now uh, a lot of people told me that even you should you start using project management too. Some of my friends in the industry already. And I always wanted to start off with some some kind of a tool and then I started I tried out many tools and what happened to be is something that is not affordable at that point for me or something that is extremely complex you had to go through materials you have to go through education universities of these products 
the so called products in the market you and we know what those products are uh, and then learn how to use these products so these products are so complex uh, where i had to teach all my 40 people who are the recent recruits of the company on how to use them that was quite frustrating honestly and then i was searching for tools couldn't find any plain started as an internal tool uh, more similar story like slack did uh, we started it as an internal tool and then we kind of built uh, the product from first principles uh, the whole point is i don't want people to learn about product how to use the product why do you have to create a generation material for people to use the product so like that how plain got into the space and then we open sourced it you know the whole stuff is cool i know the story but i think a lot of people yeah. don't as much so i want to dig into a couple of things there you had this company caravel you're building um nlp models using bert and spacey and these 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 sort of free llm era uh, ai frameworks and you you had a lot of organizational complexity you built this tool to help you manage projects and manage execution when you open sourced it um i believe this was your brother vihar's idea yes. to push this out in the open source community what what do you think he was thinking when he encouraged you to open source it and why and why do you think it made sense to open source it in the first place i don't know great uh, i think it starts with uh, the simple project that i started back then called django i was using django for so long i am in extreme love with the tool and it was open source i was able to make a lot of money with that small okay. framework uh, so i love open source because it helps you progress uh, it helps you build things uh, the underlying thing for many organizations has been open source and organize from an organization perspective a lot of companies are also moving to open source i always had this in my head where i always wanted to build an open source product or project i'll say not a product uh do something open source it and then just leave it to the world that's the kind of philosophical thinking i had uh but never from a open core or open commercial open source perspective but when we tried building plain internally and then eventually at a point it became a beast literally everyone at plain are using uh sorry at previous company are using plain and then my clients were using plain we never revealed that it to other people when when we shared this a uh, small tool to our clients we never shared it that this was a tool that we built it because we don't want it to be projected that way i still remember one day one of my client coming back to me saying hey i want to can you connect me to these folks who created this i want to pay for the tool right that's when we were all this sort of thinking and to answer your question on open source that was there in my head but we had one day i was randomly ty- typing on my computer i was using plain i was like what's this that's when it started i told him that we have built an internal tool called plain which is project management tool and then we kind of he kind of you have a massive beast sitting alone as a proprietary software what do you want to do that's when it hit my head so hard and i felt like hey rather than going into a shitty business model direction of proprietary uh let it go grow faster like a wildfire uh or a nice example is Uh, a nice wild rose how it grows wild and nice so we wanted to grow that way and then we open sourced it and we we did it really well in the first initial days i think you did that's that's certainly what got my attention so you mentioned something i actually want to ask about as well you talked about first principles design and first principles building how do you translate those ideas in terms of first principles engineering and first principles development to building plain like what does that mean to you what does first principles development mean to you perfect so when it comes to building plain one thing that we kept in mind is of course even when you're building a product it's a fresh idea that's just baking in your head uh we never wanted to copy a tool honestly speaking we never wanted to copy any tool in the market but it's important for you to look at these tools how they're built and then what i did was a fun story i i went back to these tools have broken the entire feature set literally like breaking a tool uh, let's say you have a tangible physical product just break it each and every feature we have ripped the entire products that are there out there in the market we looked at it as if we are looking at each and every feature from a different lens hmm. uh, let's say if a company x has about 20 set of features so we literally broke these 20 set of features and then looked at each and every feature from a different lens and applied little common sense and first principle thinking from the features at perspective 
and that helped uh, you know in the entire journey of the product and we kept names as names for example when we wanted to use the word inbox inbox is a inbox right we don't want to call it different and uh, when we wanted to have a term for projects inside like we wanted to call it projects even jokingly till today i keep talking to my marketing team saying that hey you cannot call a manhattan project a manhattan team you should call a manhattan project a manhattan project so these were fundamental ideas mm. uh, when it comes to building the entire feature set and that that's where this first principle thinking of look at each and every single feature uh whether it makes sense for the end customer to use it and not learn a lot about it because the human intuition your brain kicks a bunch of ideas on how to use it so those were pretty much on an abstract level we have a framework in terms but these were pretty much the ideas so we actually had a conversation earlier at tea hub here in hyderabad and one of the questions from the audience to me was how do i make investment decisions what's my criteria and i said well i've thought about this question a lot over the years i've made many dozens of investments and i said there's a a way i can answer the question by writing a book or i can just say it in one sentence and one sentence would be uh i try to invest in people who are forces of nature and i think you're a force of nature you have this drive and vision that is bigger than yourself it's bigger than your team it's a really important mission and so i wanted to sort of ask you how do you take that personality and drive the execution or sort of shape the execution side of things of the company um i'm i'm here in in hyderabad for a few days with you i've had the pleasure of being in your offices and you have you know 25 people there in an office and everyone's in the same location this is actually somewhat um causing me to challenge my my previous uh uh opinions strong opinions actually on you know all companies should be fully remote and you know office less and totally distributed when you've actually built an incredibly uh impressive culture and pace of execution and pace of shipping by having everyone in the same place so talk about i mean i've been i've been able to observe and like witness how you've sort of shaped execution but talk about just in terms of execution how do you think about kind of driving progress in the company and leading the company on on um everything the company's doing yeah um as in the movie we for vindata says ideas are bulletproof so ideas are important but it's important to implement these ideas so fast because as humans everybody has all these ideas in their heads when they're implementing stuff but it's super important to execute them right uh time and people and effort that you put in is super important so one way of uh thinking or the way i strategize things or see things is we'll have to have super fast execution uh sometimes i jokingly even say that we should execute as we breathe uh inside my company with all all the folks fortunate to work with some of the greatest minds uh so execution is super important and and with that you know the remote stuff what we felt was what i eventually felt was when i was kind of calling somebody on huddling on slack or asking them to jump on to a zoom call or some meeting app it was always that some guy comes in and says hey can you do this later uh can we probably can we meet in 5 minutes because i'm a meeting with another person so this is kind of chaotic which i felt was needs to be changed because execution and pace you work is super important and we thought let's have a small office where we could uh, live and breathe plain every single day and we we keep uh, talking chatting we uh, do all sorts of stuff on the floor it's it's important i believe uh, a tiny office should be good for a hybrid way and not say complete office style of stuff needs to be required when you're building stuff but it's important that you at least have a small office where you can have uh you know people coming towards to to work and that that keeps you motivated every single day and you will even breathe it and in terms of the execution i would say it's super important to execute faster and workplace of course is super important because ideas are popping up in each and every individual's heads every single day every single minute so but execution fast execution has its own flaws in terms of you can make a lot of mistakes you can screw a few things up 
when i want to execute something faster i think 1000 times i want my team to think at least 100 times and i want my engineer or the one who is doing it at least 10 times so i do a lot of thinking at my end i do that i i iteratively think about that idea on executing faster uh giving them the simple stuff i think the word mvp even came out of fast execution word um and it's important to create this tiny minimum viable features so when you're building a minimum viable product as it grows a lot of people will keep asking you for a lot of features right mm-hmm. because you have a tons of projects already in the tunnel market so i think minimum viable features are important how can you get there quickly in order to say that hey you know we we have this and then ask people to try that out the customers should i think i think i've, I've bucketed into two categories one as a set of users users are everyone and your customers are your pay, paying people i think user to customer transition has that sweet spot where they are serious about your product i think you should we should start interviewing a lot of people there at the sweet spot to a customer where they really try the product a serious customer and then ask them a lot of questions when you have this minimum viable feature and then you keep doing that so that's the strategy that we follow when we execute things we do a minimum viable feature keep iterating it have customer feedback fortunate to be on open source when we do a release we are about 24 point x stars today uh, when we do a release we do sam wars uh, to excite people of course if you have an iphone operating system jumping up you you jump you know like small kids we all jump like that uh, and people do react for our release notes so we do that constantly and we have a dis- dis- discussion forum that people again get excited there so the whole framework is build that minimum viable feature talk to your users beyond the sweet spot to customer and then build again and then keep doing that and always keep your first principle thinking in mind when you're building that feature so this is execution strategy that's awesome so if i look at the data and we talk about the data across the open source and cloud and your commercial products that you're releasing there's probably hundreds of thousands of people who've actually been touched by plane and who use plane which is kind of mind blowing in terms of going from zero where the project literally did not exist uh more than a year ago to today how how do you see the global roadmap for plane because you know we've seen these logos and the users and enterprises in pretty much every continent and every major market in Europe and North America but plane is based in India and you're based here in in Hyderabad and you you have the whole team here how do you think about going global and building a global business and going to market in the US and and in in Europe and building that kind of company and do you have sort of opinions and thoughts on how that will evolve as planes started here in India and also maybe some comments on the Indian market I mean this is like one of the most impressive countries on earth right now in general um I know you have this ambition to build you know 100 plus billion dollar company and there's obviously some huge companies here in India that are serving global markets from India but i'm just curious like how you're thinking about the strategy over sort of multiple years ahead and uh sort of the decade ahead and how, how do you how do you see that playing out in in a global sense right so in terms of uh, the roadmap that we are planning to do right now uh, of course we have a I'd not say uh, a finish like a hard I I'll not say like a hard bound script uh, when when directors we want to set it's not like a hard bound script instead we do have a flexible roadmap for the next one and a half year that is planned because the length and breadth of the application that we're building pain is not focusing on a niche it's it's spanned across different industries uh project management in general is a very high level thing and on top of it you have work management which is like everything work and then you again narrow it down to software teams market team marketing teams design teams or product teams in general so we are kind of in the space of work management project management and then you still are narrow it down to various teams so the idea is to build the core of the work management piece well and then layers on top of this nice little tiny things where it could be more uh, aligned with Uh, the concern team that we tried to build uh, for example software teams could have an agile mechanism uh, you find this word sprint in uh, the marketing uh, sorry in in the software uh, teams but you don't find that you have the word called uh, campaigns or 
the marketing they don't Funnel. use yeah but it's the same right if yeah. you if you look at it it's the same so you you do that constantly yeah. um so we were focusing on building the overall core first on the work management and then narrowing it down to uh, different various teams and uh, we have in, in terms of the countries the boundaries i think plain is already a global product uh even though we are out of india the global adoption has been massive i think the first country happened to be a us europe uh, first continents and then uh, the being open source cannot control a few things but massive traffic from russia because some software sanctioned there in russia china as well yeah china we had massive traffic and then of course india on, on the map but already a global product i think a uh, few things such as internationalization and things like that we parked them aside uh, for a reason uh, because most of the people know english right you don't need to focus on something that are too complex um and then we we trying to build this more for these kind of use cases uh in terms of uh, the whole uh, platform all together and from from uh, the question on the countries uh how we want it to be a global force is that we of course represent the country india and we're trying to build a lot of stuff a lot of companies are coming out of india especially in the open source space because you have really good developers in india uh but we also wanted to make sure that we gather all the waters because we're trying to build a global product it shouldn't be just india talent should be all across the globe we will definitely have a lot of people working from other countries uh but the whole idea here is to make sure plane is working for everyone all across the globe independent of the country and and, and the size of market that you're in so i guess the last thing i want to ask you about is your vision because i've gotten closer to i guess like a higher resolution view on sort of the the size and the magnitude of your vision and i'd like to sort of mention one thing that i heard you say when we were talking about sort of like the scope of of this vision and 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 how how big it is really for for the world and and i think you said something on the lines of plane is actually focused on accelerating civilizational progress and that was really powerful for me like it it kind of really struck a chord because there's there's this you know philosophical movement towards acceleration and sort of not acceleration for its own stake on any dimension you know you can accelerate in the wrong direction but accelerating positive technological progress for humanity we have this eac uh you know acronym and other things but this seems really close to home for you it seems like a very personal sort of drive can you talk about this accelerating civilizational progress idea and why that's so interesting and important for you sure uh i think the idea started or when i started of course building pain it was uh more like a tool for me but they if you go back in history in time the whole idea of a calendar could be just a piece of paper that somebody would have drawn and it acted as a tool for millions of people you know billions all across the globe everybody on the planet knows how a calendar looks like and then everybody on a, on the on the planet uh, knows how a table looks like you know we are used to tables when we were kids we used to draw these lines where we don't want to spill all our words instead we want to organize these words in the form of tables uh even the multiplication tables you call them tables tables because you organize them so for me uh tools i think needs to come from the origins of because these are simple methods uh it could be a small table which accelerated into a spreadsheet or it could be a, a calendar which lies on your desk or on your wall or a complex thing like kanban which organized a lot of people in the automotive space i think kanban is the origins of kanban if i'm not wrong is from the automotive space and this helped a lot of people to these are tiny things these are these are physical things right you we have seen this in the world and which are developed with just a printing machine and get on the printing machine it's simple things you have a piece of paper you have a piece of uh you know board to stick it and then the 3m stickies that you have these are fundamental ideas which help humanity progress and when you translate these ideas these simple ideas into software tools it's super important for you to take the same concept 
applied all across software industry and our open source helps to create more such methods so that's where i meant we'll have to push clean should be the primary propeller of moving progress civilization rather than just cram tools so every piece of software now we have more responsibility a uh, thing that we create needs to be a tool that pushes human imagination thinking and progress in the civilization because it's 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 super important that we take these fundamental ideas on how we used to lay things around us and organize even even i sometimes jokingly you know use this concept of label printers uh these were invented long long ago in history but helped people organize things so different parts of a project management tool are plan execute align track so all these verbs that you find uh are essentially to move things progress things but the more organized the more uh data that you have on how you push things will help you move faster so that's where the core underlying mission for plane exists to push the whole civilization uh towards progress progress them more by helping them with these right tools good tools that are digital in nature for us around us and then drive the whole humanity towards progress so that's the thought that i have seems like a, a very critical and important thing for the future of humanity and um yeah i just want to thank you for your time and Thanks. giving me the privilege to be your partner on this journey thank you thank you very much it's been it's been a... to have you on our uh you know on our company as as a partner as uh, an investor as a friend who can help me out in all ways possible i think we'll really make something big i think we are and uh, uh it's it's a real honor to know you bamsi so thank you for doing this and thank you for your time thanks thanks